Hi guys. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to work the Moat app using a single sample T in JASP, SPSS, and SAS. So first thing I want to do is click on mean differences here and actually go down to single sample T. There are two options. One calculated directly from the means, uh, population mean and the um, sample mean, or calculated directly from T. Let's start with means. So what I would need to do if I want to calculate from means here is to enter the sample mean, the population mean, the standard deviation and standard error of the sample, uh, the sample size or the degrees of freedom, and alpha. Remember that you can enter everything on the left, so you have to enter one thing from each row, and you can do SD or SE, so either one. Uh, and this will help if you have maybe a journal article and you um, they only give you standard error. <clears throat> so you don't need both, you need one of these two. So let's look at some examples. So this is SPSS, let me start with JASP. So some output from JASP directly, where we had a single sample t-test compared to uh, a group of student scores. So we had this um, sample of people taking the SAT who made a 1370 as compared to a group of people who made a 1080. So this just shows you what we entered as the population mean. So I would enter this mean, 1370, and this population mean, 1080. Let's go back here. So just type those directly in. The standard deviation from the sample is here. So 112.7, or I can enter the standard error. And last, we want to enter the sample size, which here is 15 people, or the degrees of freedom, which is 14. So one or the other. Now we should get a very similar number set of numbers here to the output from JASP. And JASP is one of the only ones that actually gives you the confidence interval for D. But um, here we're just assuming that maybe you forgot to click the button or you just kind of want to check and make sure you're doing it right. Or maybe check and make sure we're doing it right. So 15 here. Uh, alpha remembers your criterion type one error level. So most people use 0.05, um, but you could change that to 0.10. That will change your confidence interval. So when you hit calculate, oops, I didn't know that was going to change windows here. <laughs> One second. I was trying to make it bigger. But when you hit calculate, what you'll get is the output from <clears throat> the output that defines what uh, happened in your study. So it gives you a definition of what a D effect size normally is interpreted as, which is the standardized difference between two means. It gives me the actual calculated effect size and the confidence interval given that I entered 0.05. So we could check here and we get very similar numbers because we're doing the same thing in the background. Um, so this at least matches. Uh, our interpretation is that the effect size does not include zero. So this effect size is probably different from zero. And then also gives you the summary statistics. So it'll give you my T value back and my P, and then it'll give you an interpretation of P. So P here is less than alpha, so that would be considered significant. And so we're getting all the same numbers back that we entered here. Now, if we were looking at SAS, what we would want to do, let's zoom in here some. <clears throat> okay, so this T value is not correct because we clearly calculated this against a zero instead of against um, 1080. And so uh, we'll have to fix that, update that for you. But what we would look at is mostly all here. So we would calculate, uh, we would take n, here's our mean and standard deviation um, uh, against, <clears throat> excuse me, against, uh, use this one in the app. And then we would see if we, what effect size we got back. So we're going to ignore this t value because clearly that has been tested against zero. So easy to mess up here. All right. Now, if we were looking at SPSS, what we might do is use the statistics directly from here. So here's n, my mean, my standard deviation. So all three of them kind of give you those descriptives pretty easily. But we also get t in our degrees of freedom here. Right. So that's how we calculate it directly from the statistics in the sample. Now remember the population mean will be given to you. Let's switch over now to single sample t from t and we'll actually use that incorrect SAS output to show you how you should be very suspicious of some of the numbers that we are seeing in it. 
So starting with SPSS here, um, we would take the numbers directly from here. So I can enter T and my degrees of freedom. So we do 9.98 and then 14.05 and hit calculate. And so we get back that same effect size we saw before. So for single sample T, it doesn't matter if you enter it from means or from T because they translate pretty well. Now, if you're doing independent T, you should do it directly from means if you can because the translation is not as precise. Uh, same interpretations as before. And then it does actually print this back out in APA style for you. Now, if I look at the code pages for either one of these, it's going to show you the formulas that it's doing to calculate. So the formula for D for a single sample T is T over the square root of N. Okay. And then it just gives you the formula for T, even though we're not really calculating it here. And then if you want to use this in R, what you could do is use R effect size um, library, which is still moat, which is what this runs on in the background. And you would use D.single.T.T. .t. Um, the help page here is what they're, where this video is going to be. So let's take a quick jump back to means. And we can look at that code again. So now the code for D matches onto the formula that we're actually using to calculate this. So it's mean minus mu divided by standard deviation. Okay. All right, now why we shouldn't trust that SAS output um, is because this T value is abnormally large. So T value 47 is, is a number you can get, but it's probably not totally, right? So let's try entering that one instead. Click on summary, come back here, and we're gonna get a D value of 12. Now all of this ran, um, and it gave me an effect size and it's confidence interval, but really D values that high are completely improbable. And so you might go, mm, maybe I'm doing something wrong. Um, so one important part of doing single sample T in any of these statistical programs is making sure you're comparing it against the right um, value because zero is the default. Now, if I want to do this for um, looking at the JASP output, I would just use the numbers here. So all three of these are very similar and you should get the same T values back. Um, and then our effect size in JASP, we can just match. So that together is how you calculate single sample T, uh, Cohen's D for single sample T, given either the means or the T test in our three different programs.